Physics in Cricket Now, how do physics work in a sport? The truth is, displacement, velocity, and collisions have every action combined in a sport. But how does this work? Now first let's say, what is cricket? Cricket is basically a sport where there's three wickets set up on each side of the field in a close related part, and there's two batters. And the two batters have a bowler. Now the objective of the game is to get the batters out by hitting the wicket or getting the ball caught. Now the bowler throws the ball, and then there's a wicket keeper in the back to catch it in case they miss. And then there's fielders to catch a fly ball. Now displacement. Displacement is how far something is from the origin or the distance from the origin. I'm not going to say distance because the true meaning of distance is a whole other thing. But it's how far an object is from its origin. So how does this work in cricket? So in cricket, a ball is thrown by a bowler. And when the ball is hitting the ground, let's say it's 10 meters away from the bowler, it's displaced 10 meters from the origin, which is the bowler's hand. And then when it gets caught by the wicket keeper, it's thrown back to the bowler, and that's the origin. So the displacement is zero when it's back in the bowler's hand, which is the origin. But anytime it's farther away from the bowler's hand, it is displaced a certain number of meters, 10 when it's on the ground, 20 when it's in the wicket's hand, etc. Distance is basically the total amount of meters or units, or just the total amount traveled by the ball in cricket's case. Now let's say a ball traveled 25 meters and then traveled back 25 meters to its origin point, it would be displaced 0 meters because it would be at its origin. But the total distance traveled would be 50 meters because 25 plus 25 is equal to 50 and that's the total amount of meters it has traveled even though it's back at its origin and the displacement is 0. Speed. Speed is the distance in a certain amount of time which a certain mass travels, a ball or a person in Cricket's case. So if a mass is traveling around 30 miles per hour, that means every hour it will cover 30 miles. Now the speed is calculated distance divided by time. These are velocity and position time graphs. Now they each show different graphs upon how far something is traveled or the displacement of something. So this is a position time graph showing the distance and the time. So as you can see, it can show exactly how far something is going depending on the second it is going. Now, you can look at the velocity time graph and this really shows the change in velocity per each second. So these are in seconds and velocity and that's the time and you can see that it, the velocity it went up and then it went down. Now let's say in a case that the velocity in a velocity time graph went negative, that means that it's going back to its origin point as it's measuring the displacement. Now, you can see the little lines, that's the acceleration or the deceleration of the velocity. When velocity decreases, it's deceleration. A vector is a measurement of something with a magnitude and a direction. An example of a vector is velocity, as velocity has a magnitude and is commonly written with a direction. Now, a velocity states how much an object is displaced from its origin. Now, you can see here, if you write out a velocity, you can see where the magnitude and you can see where the direction is. Now vectors play a key measurement in cricket. As when you hit the ball, the ball has a certain velocity and velocity is a vector. As this ball is going to the right and in this case east and it's going at a certain velocity. So therefore whenever anyone moves, whenever anyone hits a ball, they're always using vectors when they don't even know it. The first law of motion is inertia. Now inertia states that an object at rest or in motion stays at rest or in motion until acted upon by an external force. This can relate to cricket as a ball that's going in the air at a certain velocity will not stop unless hitting the ground or someone's hand. Now the second law of motion is that force is equal to mass times acceleration as the ball needs to be thrown a certain speed and has to have a certain mass in order to create a force which would hit the bat. Or same with the bat, let's say the bat has a certain mass and it's accelerating towards the ball. Now it has to have a certain acceleration and mass to create a force to hit the ball. The third law of motion. The third law of motion states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. 
For example, if I were to push against a wall, a wall would give me the same reaction back. In cricket, this occurs a lot because cricket balls are hit into the air many times and they come down. So let's say they were coming down at 9.8 meters per second squared, the acceleration of gravity. They would receive the same action from the ground as the impact was upon the ground and every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Gravity. Now gravity on the Earth differs from all the other planets because gravity is to do with mass. I'll get into more detail later. Now Earth's gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. Now it's squared because gravity is an acceleration. So if we were to hit a cricket ball into the air, the amount of seconds which it would take to fall down would be how fast the velocity would be when it hit the ground. This would be because the acceleration would cause the velocity to keep increasing every second as it's 9.8 meters per second and the cricket ball would keep falling from the air to hit the ground due to the gravitational force of the earth. But how do you calculate the force of gravity? In order to calculate the force of gravity, you must use the gravitational constant and you must multiply it by the two other masses and then you must divide it by the distance squared in order to get the force of gravity. Unbalanced and balanced forces upon an object. Now in cricket, let's just draw a field over here. If we were to take two cricket balls and we were to inflict many different forces on them, for example, in this case, let's say we inflicted the gravitational force on the ball, it would give the normal force and the same force back to the ball, keeping it in place, not letting it move. So this is a balanced force. But let's say that we took a bat and we nudged the ball a little bit. There would still be the gravitational force afflicting the ball and the normal force keeping it in place. However, there would be another force pushing it from the right, causing it to move. In order to measure force, you must use the units and newtons. Now, in order to calculate it, you must multiply mass times acceleration, which is the second law of motion. Momentum. Now the momentum of an object is calculated by multiplying the mass multiplied by the velocity. For example, let's say we had a cricket bat and it was moving at a velocity of 5 meters per second and the mass was 5 kilograms, the momentum would be 25. If a ball was flying through the air that was 6 kilograms, moving at 10 meters per second, momentum would be 60. Now impulse is the change in momentum. Now for example, let's say a cricket ball is flying through the air and it is traveling at 20 meters per second and has a mass of 5 kilograms. The momentum would be 100. But let's say the ball crashed into the wall and it just stopped, then the momentum would be 0 because the velocity would be 0 and 0 times 5 is 0. There are two types of collisions, elastic and inelastic collisions. In elastic collisions, no heat is transferred and there's no deformation of the object. While in inelastic collisions, there's either a heat transfer or deformation of the object when it collides into something else. Let's get a better idea while using cricket examples. So let's say there was a bat, okay? And it were going to hit a ball that was flying at it and then it smacked the ball and the ball's velocity changed rapidly and so did the bats. That would be an example of an inelastic collision as there was a heat transfer from the bat to the ball. Now you can see an inelastic collision right here. And this is a great example of an elastic collision. In conservation of momentum, an elastic collision is measured m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2, which is equal to m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2, where m is mass and v is velocity. In an inelastic collision, however, it is measured m1 times v1 is equal to m1 plus m2 times v. 
Free body diagrams are usually drawn by scientists, physicists, and everyone to understand the forces acting upon an object. So if you look upon this poorly drawn ball, you can see that there are different forces acting upon an object, such as the normal force, such as possibly a force from someone pushing it from a bat, even gravity. It's just a way to understand it. Thank you for watching my presentation.